learn one thing an awesome online event that i had the privilege and honor to participate in find out next What's up guys, this is Pedro from My Stuttering Life, where you will hear the good, the bad, the very ugly. We're gonna laugh, we're gonna cry, but through it all, just know that you are not alone. So, let's get started. So I was asked to participate in an online event, and also a one-on-one -on -one interview with Andre Denisenko. He has a YouTube channel titled free from stutter where he offers techniques to help you with your st stuttering so i participated in this awesome interview it was fantastic and then i participated in an online panel discussion with other leaders in the stuttering community these are champions of our cause to just raise awareness that there are people out there who are here to help out because we all have our own journeys we all have the same common denominator where we stutter but the common bond that we share is you are not alone there are others out there who will support you and guide you and be there to lift you up when you need it and that is why i chose to participate in this awesome online event. So you will hear part one, my interview with Andre, and then part two is the online panel discussion. And there are some awesome presenters. You have the Broca brothers. You have Linda Hercott. You have Chase Gillis. You also have Rick Scudo and Peter Lowe. This was an excellent exchange of ideas and support for one another. So I am extremely proud, privileged, and honored to have been asked to participate in this awesome online event for stutterers. So hope you enjoy this. D drop a comment, let me know. And as always, if you got value, like this video and share it. Hope you have an awesome day and we will talk again. Hello everyone. We're having Pedro Pena. Hello Pedro. Great to see you. Good morning. Yeah. So uh, it's amazing to have you because I've been listening to your podcasts, watching your videos, and the thing that usually instructs me is your positivity. And that's interesting that when I asked you what would you talk about as the first thing maybe, or maybe the topic, the thing that you said was, positive mindset yeah so what i'm saying is that you're doing what you preach about or like uh that's that's the reality that's the reality that's i that uh that i actually see in you and the question that the first question really i would ask is how maybe do we get there like it might seem like um uh, like be positive but i i think maybe it's not that easy or or not that simple right oh no the, the, this actually took me a very long time because i um i my st stuttering started at the age of 5 when i had the dog attack and and right after my speech was at zero percent and then my parents put me in speech therapy all through school and so what you are hearing right now is 
over two decades of speech therapy. Mm. I have done the delayed speech technique. Mm. Record me on these long cards and and run it through a recorder to hear myself. Did some feedback. One technique that I learned that I still use today is diaphragmatic breathing. Mm. My speech therapist was telling me that I was breathing through my chest. That is shallow breathing. And if you have a speech impediment, it's better to breathe from your diaphragm because as you inhale, and then on the exhale, you can speak and there are no blocks because you are speaking on the air that is being exhaled. Oh, got it. Got it. Although, uh-huh. although if you speak like that, you sound robotic. Mm-hmm. And so, so I had to practice for a long time to have it sound s- close to normal as I can get. And then I did hip, hypnosis wow. I was in, the, in the military. And let me tell you, that was the first time in my entire life that my entire body was at rest. Because as you know, if you st- st- stutter, all of your organs are tense. Your right. entire body is locked up. Right. And picture this. Waking up at 5 a.m. and your body is already tensed up. And then you work the entire day. Your body is still tensed up. You come home at 5 p.m. and from 5 a.m. until 5 p.m., your entire body has been tensed up, locked up. And when you get home, you don't want to do nothing but sit on the couch and just right. rest. Because you you are drained physically, right. you are drained emotionally, you are drained psychologically. Right. Because the, there are many crutches, many techniques that I have learned throughout my 43 years of stuttering. And so as as we are talking right now, I know there are words coming down the pike that there are a couple that I will have difficulty with. And so I will take those words and replace them with easier words as we are still talking. Got it. Uh, yeah. So um, stuttering, like when you when you get into that uh, uh, kind of emotional and physical tension after you've done like a presentation. After that, the whole body feels like who, and um, it needs rest. And yeah, okay. it. It just gets rest. Mm. So uh, I listened to one of your recent maybe episodes with Joni Clays. Yes. And it's interesting that she said that they 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 were inviting you or they invited you to some event marketing gathering or something where you. Uh, maybe make a presentation and she never thought about you as a person who stutters not because you don't stutter uh, you obviously do but she didn't attribute stuttering to you like uh like something that defines you right and this is i think again the the core characteristic that we want to have in life in general 
so that we're not focused on stuttering when we speak, but rather on, on what we're doing, on the message we're, on the connection with another person or the audience. So uh, you touch that, that's, it's been a journey, but what, uh, again, would you advise, what would you say, how to start uh, on that journey to really truly feeling that? Because we can say to, to ourselves, okay, I won't focus on stuttering, but that moment when we stutter, usually it's kind of, again, we either feel that it's, it's starting to control us because we feel that embarrassment or something, shame, call it whatever, but and it starts to control us, or we instead uh, focus on the conversation, on connecting with another person. So what can be done? It, it, and what would you advise maybe again as the first step on that road well the most powerful thing that i had learned on this journey when i was in in network marketing is you are surrounded by like-minded people you are surrounded by individuals who are there to only lift you up. They are there to support you, guide you, whatever that you want to do in life or in, in general, they are 100% behind you. And when you surround yourself with positive people, you can do anything. Because prior, I had people in, in my circle who were very negative. And they would tell me that I, I could not do this be, be because of my stutter. I could not go for this job because of my stutter, I could not reach this milestone in my career because of my stutter. And so as, as you are listening to these people who are around you constantly, you begin to assimilate all of their negativity. And as a stutterer, when you're only focused on the negativity, my speech, I can only speak for myself. Right. My speech was just horrible. I mean, I couldn't even, I couldn't make a phone call. I could not speak to an individual because I was already so beaten down right. by those negative people around me. And when I got rid of them, and this was a huge milestone in my life when I got rid of all of those negative people in my life and only surrounded myself with positive people who are just a phone call away, who are there to help and guide you in any way. I didn't care if I stuttered. Who cares if Pedro can't say his name? The world will not stop because I cannot say my name. And when these positive individuals were encouraging me to get on stage, it was a no-brainer. I would, I would walk towards the stage, and normally, that's when my heart would stop. <laughs> right. <laughs> but with all those people in the audience, behind you, supporting you. I walked on stage and, and I spoke in, in front of a hundred people and it was the best feeling in the world because I never thought that I would be in that position in 
my life because all that I heard growing up is I will never get a job. I will never get married. I will never have a family. I will never have a successful career. All I should do is just stay home and collect a disability check every single month and just live my life. Right. I mean, that's, yeah, that's not right. So um, it's interesting that I believe a huge piece, and you would probably agree, and you actually say that as well, that a huge piece of stuttering is stuttering shame, how we feel about it. Um, and we're dealing with that. And every day, uh, I, uh, what struck me, one, one of the things that struck me is the name of your podcast, which is My Stuttering Life. So again, usually we're trying to hide it somewhere and we feel shame about shame. We're, we're, we're trying to like, uh, again, hide everything, not, uh, not talk, not feel, not, not kind of uh, uh, get it out. How did this come to your mind to call it My Stuttering Podcast? Because again, in the nutshell, what we're, um, again, I, I'm talking about my, uh, myself, what I'm doing with people who stutter. We, we're trying to do something with stuttering and it always feels like something bad, something shameful they cannot talk about. So when you learn a guitar, you meet a friend, you say, oh, you know, I'm learning a guitar, something good to share. But when it says like, okay, my stuttering life, like it, it, it might feel for most people who started like something negative, something you want to hide, and you made it open. So how did this idea come to you? And yeah, that's the question maybe. Once I once I embraced my stutter, and that took me a very long time to do because like you previously stated i had the shame i had the guilt but a m milestone is when i turned 40 years old mm -hmm. mind you i had been stuttering from f five years old all the way to 40 years old wow so so I was done. I told myself, enough is enough. I'm not going to care what other people think of my stutter. I'm not going to let their opinions of me become my reality. So when I turned 40, I said, that's it. I'm done. And when I did that, let me tell you, a huge weight. I mean, just, it was lifted up. It was gone. It was gone. And I never knew how powerful affirmations are. I, see, affirmation. I never knew how powerful <laughs> they were until I was telling myself, Pedro, uh, you're hashtag awesome. You can do this. Who cares what other people think about your stutter? The world will not stop because I cannot say my name. You're Pedro, you stutter, life goes on. The shame, the guilt was gone. And so in my journey in marketing, I in, engulfed myself into personal development. I read books by Les Brown, Jim Rohn, the uh -huh. awesome Mel Robbins, who taught me in her book, The Five Second Rule is yeah. whatever that I do, I always count backwards in my head. Five, four, three, two, one yeah. go 
And then I can make a phone call. I can do a presentation. And so at that point, I told myself, there are other people out there. There are other people just like me who feel that they're stuck in, in their career, in whatever, because of their speech. So I created my YouTube channel and podcast, my stuttering life, because in, in my 43 years of stuttering, going to be 49, no, <laughs> 44 years, there you go. I have been through so much as a stutterer. I mean, you name it, I've been through it. I failed, I failed again, I failed again. But what I learned is from every failure, I learned from it. And so I yeah. applied it to the next one. And so that way, people from around the world, I have followers in Pakistan, I have followers in Poland, Australia, India, who will email me, I thought I was the only one. I want to thank you for having this podcast. I want to thank you for having this YouTube channel because I thought it was only me. Right. I thought that I was the only one in the entire world who experienced it and there was no one to talk to. Wow. And, and with, with naming my, my podcast, My Stuttering Life, I am just chronicling everything that happened to me to let others know that you could live a positive life as a person who stutters. You, you can just be you. Just be you. And every single day you wake up, this, this will be an awesome day. I'm going to hit it head on. If I have hiccups, oh, well, life goes on. But I know that there are people around me whom I can reach out and they are a great support system for me throughout my day, my week, my life. So how can I lose? I can't. It, it's a win-win. Got it. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful what you say. Uh, can I ask you about, um, this is a bit for me, again, like uh, also, um, if you wish, a speaking exercise, a confidence exercise, self-esteem exercise. What do you feel about uh, the podcast, the videos? So you are speaking, you're interacting, you're creating certain feeling, you're preparing. Do you feel that it's been a good, again, exercise for you doing the videos, doing the podcasts? Uh, again, speaking wise, confidence wise, self esteem wise, uh, what do you think? Because I'm trying to get to something people can do in their life. Um, again, I'm like in the group, I'm suggesting shooting videos. Uh, and you mentioned, I think, yeah, you mentioned that you are, for example, talking to the mirror as a practice. So that's the practice with yourself. And when you do the podcast, shoot a video, it's a bit, yeah, shooting a video, it's also kind of with yourself, but you're doing it for somebody. So uh, what would you say, is it also an exercise? Yes, it is. In doing these videos, in, in doing the podcast, I find myself that I'm still learning. We are always learning about ourselves and our stutter. And in, in doing these videos and the podcast episodes, I've, I have been through so much in my life. And 
learned great techniques that I want to get out there to other people who may not have access, who may be having difficulty in one particular area. And maybe one of the techniques that I have learned will help them out. For example, in job interviews, I would practice in, 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 in front of the mirror for hours, for hours and hours and hours until I got it right. And in the job interview, when I would go in there and I would first dis, disclose that I have a speech impediment. Right. But, but right after that, I tell them, I battle with it every day, but every day I win that battle. And then the job interview starts. So by then, I am already ready. My body is pr prepared. My positive mindset is in go mode. And so I'm ready to answer any of their questions because I took the power back. I took back control. And when I did that, no one can ever tear me down. No one can ever put me down because I am already in that positive mindset. I'm here, I'm ready, so let's go. I really love what you say that I fight and I win every day. So that's really powerful. So when you say I win this day, does this mean that like I have a plan to do something and I do it no matter how much fear, no matter how much like something negative I might feel when I'm entering that. Mm, so that's the thing. That's the thing. Uh huh. Mm. Right. Yeah. And that's, because. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. The old Pedro, when I would have a block, it would shut down my entire day. Right. I, mean, I was literally in a dark room, just on the, on the floor, sitting down, thinking about how dumb am I? How stupid? Am I? I can't even place an order at a right. fast food restaurant. And and that was the old Pedro. But the new Pedro, after I turned 40, those battles, when I would have a challenge, a battle, I I would keep moving forward. And if and if I had a block, oh well, I kept on moving forward and in my God. mind that is a win and every single day you know i have my good days and then i, I have my bad days but every single day i do not i do not let it affect me i go on i have i have a positive God. mindset i am an eternal optimist because the old Pedro, prior to turning 40, I mean, my stuttering caused depression. You know, there was a time in my teenage years where I was in a very dark place. And so. I never thought that it would get better. But I learned that there, that there is light at the end of the tunnel. A homeless person told me that. A homeless person told me every life is precious. And every one of us has a purpose in this world. Wow. So, Find your purpose. Go do it. 
do it because we're here on this earth for a reason. Wow. And after I heard that, at the age of 14, it, the darkness went away. And so I focused on, okay, let me graduate high school. And then after high school, let me join the military. I joined the military. I got out of the military. I went to college. I have an, uh, I have an undergraduate degree. I have a graduate degree. And now I have a great career. And had I not heard those words, you know, I just, I, I don't think that I would be here. Right. Wow. Wow. So the practical thing, because in this, um, in this interview, I'm looking for, we're looking for the practical nuggets for people who started, like, again, we're thinking like, oftentimes it feels like people are talking about their journey. I've been there, but I went like through that and now I'm here. And many people think, okay, yeah, he's got his journey, he's there, but I'm still here. How do I go that journey? And usually it all comes down to the first step, uh, which is maybe like small, but in reality, it's, it's half of the way because uh, usually it's, it's all about how hard to make the first step. Even though it's a t it might be tiny, but it's so hard that in reality, it takes like half of the whole journey energy, if you wish or something. So uh, what I love what yeah. you're saying, which to, to me sounds like a very practical mindset to see that I'm winning this day. And there's always an option to give in to our fear or call it whatever, and not do what you want to do, or do it. And if you do it, that's a win. That's a big win. Yeah, right. Because we are, we're in our comfort zone every day. And, and prior to turning 40, I, st I stayed in my comfort zone. I never took my foot out <laughs> right. and go outside of my comfort zone because I knew something bad was going to happen right yeah. there is danger <laughs> ruin yes danger danger will robinson <laughs> yeah. and and so after i turned 40 i said i am going to step out of my comfort zone just a little bit every single day and when i did that i gave myself a daily win I won that day. Wow. It can be a little thing, a tiny wow. thing. But when you do that, you are building every single day your confidence. You, and there is a great author, and he's, he's my um, new friend. His name is Rama Siva. Yeah. And he wrote... Sure a book regarding self-confidence uh -huh. and so with every daily win i was getting better and better and better and so that way if there was a huge obstacle a huge battle that i knew was coming down the pike i was going to be all right because i had been building up towards it and I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep moving forward. And if I fail, that's all right. I'm going to learn from that and apply it to the next battle, the next challenge. So by stepping out of your comfort zone, it can be just a little thing. And if you can do that every single day, those are daily wins that have helped me 
in my life as a stutterer. Wow, that's amazing. Actually, uh, you're saying exactly, uh, uh, we had an interview recently with Chase, uh, Chase Gillis. His, his whole topic was about uh, discomfort and getting outside of the comfort zone which is exactly what you're saying. So um, again, this is a very practical thing, even though it seems like something conceptual, we think uh, about practical stuff as something speaking, speaking tricks or techniques or something, but this is a very practical thing as you are sharing it. Uh, but, um, because as you as you as you as you shared you tried many techniques and that's that's the truth we're we're trying to do something with our speaking as that's where um where stuttering shows up but um yeah there are some deep uh, deeper levels where it still lives it's not seen, but it's there. Um, so that's um, interesting what you're saying. So in terms of the speaking stuff, the thing that you liked was the, dia the breathing with the diaphragm from the diaphragm, uh, but it's not very practical when you're already speaking. So, I mean, it's not something you can do all the time. That's what you right. said. Mm. Because as, as you are speaking on your breathing, you right. sound robotic. And at some point, you're going to have to <laughs> yeah. work yeah. on it. And so that way, it sounds... A, where it becomes more n normalized right. for you. Right, right. Actually, as you showed it, when you're breathing out and you're saying the phrase, at that point, it's not yet robotic, but yeah, I agree that our speaking is anyway a bit broken. That's why it's easier to sing because singing is like, a rip, bum, 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 bum. Singing always has a certain pattern, and you go it right. again and again and again. And as you mm -hmm. as you show, like you're breathing it out and you're saying it, but then you have to repeat it, and then you're breathing something and saying it, right? So it creates exactly. like when 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 you go like with that pattern it's it's uh inside the pattern like inside it it doesn't sound maybe robotic at least it didn't sound when you said it but um to create that all the time maybe it's a bit hard i'm not sure how um your yeah, like um therapist were, was presenting that but yeah i mm, mm, I, I I got you. I got you. So I think uh, I think we cover. If you give me just one second, actually, I wanted to ask you. You you covered that pretty much, but still, when you feel bad, uh, maybe not because of your speaking, but in general, because you know life is not only the speaking right what do you say to yourself how do you get yourself up back to life all right so we all have that voice in our heads i have a negative voice that pops up from time to time i call him oscar oscar and so if if I am pre, pre, if I am presented an opportunity for for a many things, Oscar always pops up. Right. You can't do you can't do that, Pedro. Remember, Pedro, Pedro, sweet Pedro, you can't do that. Right. Right. You stutter. Hello, are you awake in there? Hello, you can't. Right. Do that. 
But what I learned is I shut Oscar down. I tell Oscar to shut up. And when he's gone, I move on. And we've all had that negative voice that just beats us down right. on a daily basis or an, on an hourly basis <laughs> in, yeah. in my life, on every hour on the hour. Because as a stutterer, every single interaction is a challenge. Every time I look at the phone, my heart beats a little bit faster. And then Oscar pops up. Don't do it. You can't do it. And when I shut him down and count backwards, thank you, Mel Robbins. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And I answer the phone. I got it. I got it. it. So we all we all have that negative voice in us. Give it a name. Give it a name. And once you have done that, shut it down. Right. Whatever you want. But I call mine Oscar because growing up, I watched Sesame Street. You know, uh-huh. big, with Big Bird, Bird and Ernie. And there was always Oscar the Grouch. Mm-hmm. Oscar the Grouch lived in a trash can. Got it. He was always angry, always negative. I mean, everything that came out of his mouth was negative. And so I named my negative voice inside my head, Oscar. And so when he pops up, I tell him to shut up because I'm going to do this. And I do it. Wow. That's a huge psychological exercise. It might seem like, a, you know, some people might say, though, that's childish. What a stupid thing. But this is a psychological thing because uh, our brain uh, works, you know, in concepts, in words, in, in some reality. There is not like, uh, like when we... When we were born, we don't have the language. We don't have those, you know, concepts in mind. Nothing, right? But then we recreate that. And actually, uh, when, again, the negative thought, that bad thing uh, comes, it's real. And we need to deal with it, uh, make it, like, real. And um, this is an exercise to make it real, to make it in and to actually deal with that. Otherwise, mm-hmm. otherwise, it's attacking me from somewhere. I don't know where, where it is. It's controlling me, and that's it. Right. I am becoming that thing. So we kind of right. separate that. That's Oscar, mm-hmm. or you, yeah, we can call it differently, but that's something, and then we start communicating with that something. Wow. Uh, right. and, and all those people who tell you, that is childish. Those are negative people. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. don't even have them in my yeah. head. Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. That's Oscar in my head start, mm-hmm. starts talking about it. Actually, I'm, right. yeah, that's the, like, people, uh, that's actually Oscar in our head talking to that, to, to us. Mm. Yeah. So I wonder, have you learned that somewhere or it's your, uh, like your thing that you, you uh, came up with or you learned it somewhere? During the years of speech therapy and, and going through my journey of personal development, I, I always had that negative voice, but I never gave it a name. And once I did that, again, I took back control. I will not let Oscar run my life. I will not let Oscar dictate every step that I make. Because if I did that, I would not be where I am today. I would still be in that dark place no one's going to hire me i will never have a career i will never get married i will never have a successful life if i keep 
listening to that negative voice. And once I gave it a name, I took back the power. I took back the control, told him to shut up and that I was going to do whatever I planned to do. No one is going to stop me. I'm Pedro. I stutter. Guess what? Life goes on. But I will keep moving forward. If you, if you tell me something negative that I cannot do, you are not in my circle. <laughs> I say bye-bye. I don't need you in my circle. I only have positive people. And it's so powerful. I can't tell you how powerful it is to have people around you who support you no matter what. They will lift you up. Whatever you want to do, it's just amazing because you can do it. Yeah. Because I, yeah. I never thought in a million years that I would ever be on video. Never. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. So thank you so much, Pedro. Uh, it's uh, a great pleasure having you. Thank you, Andre, for ha having me on. This has been a true honor and privilege to let other people know who stutter that you are not alone. You have all of us. You have us as a support group. If you're having a hard time, reach out. That's why we're here because I can only speak for myself. I've probably been through it, you know, with right. dating, job interviews. I mean, I've been through it. So you are not alone. We're, we're all in this together. And however that we can help, I'm here. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Pedro. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll stop our live. So hello, everybody. We're having Pedro, Linda, Peter, Hiller, Chase, Shured, and Rick. Hello, everybody. It's so, so great to see you all together. Hey. <laughs> nice to see you again, too, man. So Thank you, Andre, uh, for having this. Yeah, so actually my suggestion is to have a conversation like if we would meet in a real event, maybe going for lunch or like having some break so, so that we could talk. And uh, my suggestion to start again the conversation with two things. So first, maybe you can share a little bit uh, maybe what you've learned in our interview that we had or from other interviews that you had a chance to watch, maybe. Uh, maybe something, maybe you reinforced some idea that you had already, maybe something new. So that's what I suggest to start with. And also I suggest asking uh, somebody else here any question that comes to your mind. Um, again, maybe you saw some interview. If you haven't seen the interview, maybe we can just, uh, just go with some questions that come to your mind. Yeah, that's my suggestion. Um, and again, if the conversation goes somewhere, we'll just follow there. That's my suggestion. And uh, I, I suggest to start with like uh, with the screen. So Pedro, maybe you could go first. Uh, again, maybe you've learned something or again, and maybe you have some question. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. One of the great aspects of all of these videos is that our journeys, our stories are all different. However, as when I was watching Chase and when I was watching the, um, you know, Broca, Broca Brothers, brothers, and when, when I was watching Ameo, um, it's, it is truly phenomenal how we can all come together and help one another 
because um, even though our stories are different, we all share in the same pain, the same um, anxiety, the same struggles. And, you know, watching these awesome videos, I mean, I learned a great deal. Uh, I had no idea what, um, you know, Chase was talking about with the weights. But, you know, when I watched it over and over again, I said, oh, that's it. And so we, we are still learning right. from each other. And that's a great thing. Um, that's what I took away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, that's uh, great. That's right. Yeah. Uh, would you, I suggest asking again, anybody, any questions so that we have some conversation. So I'm, I'm uh, um, kind of giving you the role a bit, like everyone is a host today a little bit, so. Okay, uh, uh, um, I do have a, a um, question for Chase. Mm -hmm. When you do that technique, when you put your arms up, can you further um, go um, in, into detail? Because in my 20 years of yeah. speech therapy, um, um, that technique I've never heard of. Mm. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So it's just called like, are you talking about the bow and arch bioenergetics? Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's not like, it's not a speech technique or anything. It's a technique that I learned to improve your state. So what, what, what I do is I put my arms back, I push my, I push my chest forward and I breathe in through my mouth, like, and I, I, I do, I do that for 20, 20 sets. And then I, here, one sec, I'll just show you right here. And you mentioned, Chase, that that's uh, from, you learn from, uh, from the guy, I think, um, Elliot Hila, Hila and Sure met with and had an interview. Uh, Elliot, Elliot. Yeah. Pulse, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. So basically, I just lean, lean back like this. I breathe in through my mouth, like. <sighs> I do that for yeah. twenty, for twenty sets. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then I, I lean forward <laughs> with my, with my legs straight, and I just let my, my head, my head dangle and my arms dangle, and I do that. I breathe like. <sighs> like 20 times also and I do that for two sets and when I finish with that it's not for speech or anything but it just completely amps up your energy and I, I did this before I even got on here <laughs> it, it can bring your energy from from bare minimum ap apathy to like honestly you just want to go and talk to people just because you're so amped up in your own stuff and that's the main reason, like that's my philosophy behind basically why you stutter is because all those negative emotions you have and negative thought patterns and doing that, I honestly don't know the science behind it, but it just completely destroys it at least, at least, at least for like five to 10 minutes. And in those times, then you take action and then you start mm -hmm. improving. Yeah. Yeah. The exercises that, um, Elliot shows they they are really kind of again sound and look crazy. I once yeah. did it with my wife and she like said like what's 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 going on with you? <laughs> yeah, when you're when you're alone, yeah, I think that's. Uh, but again, uh, yeah, mm. and uh, talking about this energy topic, I I remember Linda with you. We also uh, when we finished our live, you said that this is the element that. Uh, you also maybe kind of uh, think is important for us. So uh, I wonder. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So I, I, I would like to. I would like to just speak about that. Yes. So Chase, when you're doing that or any other exercise that actually amps up your energy, from. Uh, 
the approach I'm coming with is that that energy is really important, but what it does as well is it balances many of the systems in your body. And so because speech is so complex, it's really great to look at it from outside the box, like not just speech. So when you do that, you, ha you allow your body a really big chance to kind of configure, reconfigure and harmonize and synthesize many aspects. And so when you feel that and speech is actually easier then, like it's a really great way to approach it because it's, um, first of all, it's more natural and we mm -hmm. really want to connect with what's already natural because you really can't argue with natural. So many people on this, um, on these interviews have talked about that and there's many ways of getting to that point. And, and many of you have, it's, it's so, so great to hear that. So yes, the energy is really important and energy, is not something that speech pathologists would talk about. I think they're sort of thinking there's something more than what they do now. Um, I've been in really close contact with the, my licensing college and what I'm doing is very different and they're asking a lot of questions and their jury's still out. But I think that they see that there's something more that can be done and I'm, I'm just ready to go for that because I think there is and I think it can be very successful as many of you have proven in many ways. Right, right. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and if you don't mind, can I ask Peter you as well? Because you're because to, to me, it sounds again, maybe in, in line with what you say, because even though expressiveness and assertiveness is something in our mind, still like doing such exercises. Uh, what do you think? Yes, Andre, I absolutely agree. Um, it's it's all about ex expressiveness. When when we make um, large movements such as as this, that you know that that is all part of being expressive. It's about showing yourself. It's about opening yourself to the world, and that is the big secret in, in my in my opinion. And from from a mind body angle. Um, so, and, and there is some science behind it. Uh, it's, it's, it's not formal science. It's, it's still, uh, as Linda said, um, in, in this case to the jury, is, is still out about it. Um, but um, there is a, a theory that psychological repression is behind uh, mind-body issues. Um, and the the opposite of of um, psychological repression is expression. So if if you do this opposite, if you express, if you uh, yes, and maybe I should add that that um, repression is is closely associated with inhibition. So if if we we are more inhibited, if we go out. If we, it's, it's an outward movement, not an in, inward movement. So if we go out, move outward, move e expressive, and, and that includes things such as, uh, as acting. You know, right. if, if we act, we are expressive, we show ourselves. So it's, for me, it all falls in, in place. It's, it, it was a big puzzle, but now um, in, as, as far as I see it, I, uh, um, yeah, uh, so that's how I would e explain the su success of that type of movement. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And maybe Helen should. Can I ask you? Sorry, I, I haven't watched the whole interview, but did you learn anything from Elliot uh, in terms of that kind of stuff or like? Uh, what was your impression? Sorry, uh, uh, who, who? Oh, oh, who oh, oh, you? I was uh, maybe Hilla or unsure. Yeah, you had the interview with uh, Elliot. So what uh, did you like? Did you learn from 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 that? I would like to start short if that's OK with you. Yeah, go ahead. OK. <laughs> First of all, I want to say that this is amazing that we're getting together here. I am getting very uh, enthusiastic. 
hearing you guys talking about the stuff you're doing right now. I've seen the interviews as well, and it's amazing. Um, it's very inspirational, very inspiring, and I think this is true for every person on this planet who has uh, these problems that we face with stuttering, blocking, uh, social anxiety, uh, and all the things that um, are intertwined with stuttering. It's amazing that what we're doing here, I have uh, the goosebumps <laughs> I have right now talking with you guys, talking about body-mind, talking about energy, talking about a process which we're all in all the time for the rest of our lives. So what we're doing here is just discussing, it's, it's amazing. So again, I have no other words for it. Um, to get in on the question you asked Andre about what we have learned from LA Hulse about energy, about body, and mind and movement and expression. And I truly uh, agree with everybody, what everybody's saying right here, and it all intertwines with each other. It's all the same thing that we're discussing here because everything is energy. Our thoughts are energy, emotions are energy in motion, which is E motion, energy in motion. Um, what we're doing with our body. Breathing, walking, standing, sitting, it's all energized. We're doing something and it has always to do with energy. Speaking is expression, is energy going outward. When we're um, having, uh, for example, a med uh, when we're, uh, for example, having a meditation, it's energy going inward because we're closing our eyes and energy goes within. So it's expression and impression, which are both uh, particularly very important to me and I think to LA Halls as well and what we've learned or what I learned from LA Halls because I've been watching his video since um, uh, 2013 I guess um, because he motivated me much to open myself up and to start like you know chasing my dream so to say but what I've learned from is that the body is also the mind. So we have the mind-body problem, but the body is also the mind. So if we have problems in the mind, it's also in the body, you see? So if we start breathing in and out, and we open up, we feel ourselves opening up uh, in the body, but also in our minds so this helps to express ourselves more fully opening up is like peter also stated is probably the thing that this is all about it's about opening yourself up opening yourself up towards other people um uh for example when you have a conversation with people you can always open up to them about your um, so-called problems problems like hey I feel a block so be patient with me because I have this and this and that so I feel a little bit anxious you can open up about those things opening up opening up with the body so you hold eye contact is opening up you express uh, you express yourself a bit more with your pronunciation which is also opening up you open yourself up with your chest. You open yourself up with your heart, yes? This is the area of your heart. You can also open yourself up in the throat. Ah, oh, you know, you do that with the breathing. Uh, mm -hmm. When you lean back like this and you open uh, this whole uh, place up, you're opening your mouth, your throat, your chest, your belly, your pelvic floor, and through that, expression comes up, whew, outward, expressive. But first, if you want to be expressive, I guess, you will have to open yourself up and it, um, through the body, through the body. It happens in the body first. So that's what I have learned, and that's what I also 
believe from my own experience uh, becoming becoming influence speaker yeah 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 that's beautiful again that's my experience as well linda it seems like maybe you want to say something or or let let me know if you oh okay i just i just want to agree with hella that's very good the mind and body are one and when we understand that then we can influence how communication in this case is uh it, it can change yeah and again yeah uh i i personally i'm very bad at this you know energy thing but what i feel is that the energy level that i have affects speaking huge like a ton not only the technical speaking but the avoidance the fear like how how i feel about mm -hmm. speaking and yeah. the physical state uh like the the physical exercises even though they're addressing kind of the body still addressing again the energy level and the mind eventually probably yeah that's yeah yeah and I also want to agree with uh, Hilly, like that was beautifully said, like that, I, I agree with that so much. And it's also crazy too, because I once combined the bow and arch bioenergetics with a uh, comfort zone challenge. So I was at the gym one time and I felt very inward. I felt like very self-conscious at the gym. So I went into the bathroom and I started doing that and looking like a crazy person, like looking myself in the mirror and people were walking into the, in, into the bathroom and then you see some random <sighs> guy breathing like that. <laughs> but as soon as I left that bathroom, I legit, I promise you, I started lifting heavier weights and I started talking to people in the gym. But it's insane how like I started lifting heavier weights. It's not just like, like the body and the mind is just, it's just insanely crazy how, it, how it's connected like that. Yeah, yeah. So that's a great topic. Sorry for going into maybe too detail on that, but um, still that, that's a great topic, I think. So if you don't mind, Linda, can I ask you uh, next, maybe sharing something, what you've learned and maybe asking something, somebody just, any anything anybody that's okay thank you okay so i have learned so much from everyone here it's just been delightful this kind of information will not be found in textbooks and often not from lectures just kind of the regular university type lectures so i'm i'm really appreciative of everybody sharing what they've done and that is that is just so great the question i have <clears throat> is when you feel like you're really quite fluent what what percent of that time would you actually think about stuttering does does stuttering kind of linger in the background um is it is it there all of the time is it does it actually go away at times and, and maybe what situations actually trigger that um yeah and any anybody who'd like to answer would be fine okay i'll go for a second um so when I'm completely fluent, unless I'm talking about stuttering, I'm not thinking about stuttering like at all. And when back when I used to stutter a lot and I look up videos on how to overcome stuttering and I do that many times throughout the day, it would, it would keep refreshing my mind, like stuttering and stuttering and techniques to overcome stuttering when I'm talking to someone I think about that stutter, that stuttering video. And those times where I looked up how to overcome stuttering were my worst moments because it was always in my mind, always replaying, trying to remember that video that said how to overcome stuttering. So yeah, that's just what I find. The more I think about stuttering, the more I stutter. But when I'm completely fluent, it's it's not even in like it, it might be like deep down in my sub subconscious somewhere that I can't see, but I've, I find I, I don't think about it at all. Okay, so you're really connected to the natural speech production that people who are fluent have. And we, people that are fluent don't think about speaking. They, they just speak. They don't worry about, you know, if I stutter or repeat, repeat and you'll hear some of that here. Um, it's, it's just like a, I just go on and continue. But um, yes, yeah, so 
getting to that stage where you can actually hook into that natural speech production system that everybody has, then it's, it's easy. It's your mind is open to think of all the things that you want to talk about. And that is, that is, kind of the goal just to be yeah. open and do do everything that uh, you want to do and say whatever you want to do chase i have one more question for you do you find that the work that you do actually is starting to accumulate and that you can sort of feel what that's like in your body when you have that energy and that freedom um, because that that is really good as well as a practice where it starts to build and you eventually you know sort of lose some of the things that maybe were holding you back before oh for sure like when i first started doing the bar and arch and i first started trying to overcome my stutter i would do the bar and arch and i would talk to people and i'd have good days for like maybe a week and then i would go back to having a bad stuttering episode for like two weeks but over time and over time the more i practiced my what i was doing the more the shorter amount of time my bad days got so instead of going from two weeks then it, it went down next time i had a bad stuttering episode it lasts a week and a half and then a week and then a few days and now right now it's like if i am stuttering badly it'll be maybe tops one day and when i'm stuttering badly that's when i recognize after the process and all the self-awareness i've gotten that in these moments i need to leave my comfort zone a lot more than if i weren't stuttering badly i like right now since i'm stuttering badly i need to do something that i'm so uncomf uncomfortable with that just pushing me way outside my comfort zone so when i wake up tomorrow yeah i like that's when i become fluent again is when i'm in a bad stuttering spot and i completely like leave my comfort zone like just in cal i was in calgary last week and i had bad speech days so i walked up to the front of the calgary stampede where like hundreds of people were and I held this free hug sign for about like eight minutes. And it was so scary. Like this is one of the scariest things I've ever done. But after that, it felt like I was on cloud nine, like, and I didn't stutter for days and like, not even like a little stuff. Like I was scared of myself Shh, crazy. <laughs> and just after that, after, all that heightened anxiety and stuff. Now when I talk to one person, talk to two people, it nowhere near compares the anxiety level I get there. So that's, yeah, if that answers your question. Yes, it, yes, it does, thank <laughs> Yeah. And actually coming back. With sort of feeling like, sorry, go, sorry, go. Sorry, sorry, Linda, yeah. Yeah, yeah, please. please. Uh, so, uh, coming back to your first question, actually, sorry, about when we're fluent, do we speak, do we think about stuttering? Think again, that's what we talked with Hila and Shured about this personality, like stuttering yeah. personality, we all feel somewhere. And let's be honest, I'll, I'll be honest first, because even though we're working, or again, we, we can call it whatever, but uh, I can I can tell myself that I'm 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 fluent I'm okay I'm like whatever a anything is fine with me, uh, no matter about the again the level of uh, severity. But still, I can confess first that yes, even though we're fluent, but again I'm, I'm talking about myself. But this stuttering personality still lives, uh, still lives there. So. Uh, so it's yeah, I would like to get into that too. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the question was, when you're a hundred percent fluent, and when you're a hundred percent fluent, you don't think about stuttering. It goes. Yeah. It flows. yeah. When you're yeah. fully fluent, just yes, this is the question. Wow. And when you start thinking about it, then you probably aren't hundred percent fluent anymore because then you have the problem of the mind-body problem. You start thinking about studying, you start thinking about, oh shit, oh, oh, here we go, this is a difficult word, uh, et cetera. Um, and then, yes, the body will tie it up, mm. and then your, tr uh, your throat will uh, 
choke, you, know, you, you will start choking, or what else uh, will happen because uh, this is uh, for every uh, person is a, uh, it's another process, it's a personal thing. I got so, it. But when you're 100% fluent, you don't think about, and we talked about this in our interview, yes, and we believe that we all are already fluent speakers because when we're speaking fluent a hundred percent we don't think about it it just flows all the pieces of the puzzle will fall together mm -hmm. is where we think oh shit, what's happening to me or we think oh i wish i could speak uh always like that and the truth is we can but we don't have to you know i don't want to put any uh pressure on someone we can speak always 100% uh, fluent, I guess, but we don't have to, again, this is maybe a difficult topic, but we can because we have it in us. Right. If we get our mind out of the way, and then our body will relax too. And, you know, we do the exercises, we do breathing exercises, we do the bioenergetic exercises, we can do stuff like that, we can do uh, other stuff I like. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking exercises obviously there are many things we can do it's a path it's a very personal path too but we have it we have it right so yeah, i got your point yeah Hila. yeah so when you're 100 percent fluent that's that's a different you don't think about it that's a short answer I agree. Mm -hmm. to a long story yeah. <laughs> so uh thank you so much and Peter, can we ask you uh, again uh, to share something and to ask uh, something? Maybe somebody, or maybe everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> Actually, I, I had a few questions, but um, in the course of this conversation, that I have already been answered. Uh -huh. um, I I wanted to to um, ask um, Linda about uh, the, the mind-body link because I think she in in her conversation in her interview she mentioned also um, the, uh, that in, in certain circumstances um, the, the uh, problems in, in your mind can, can be converted into problems of the body. Um, and I, I wanted to ask her, but I think she has already mentioned that, but, but yes, maybe I, I, should, uh, I should ask this uh, again. Uh, do, you, do you feel that one, um, it, that some psychological issues can in certain circumstances be converted into a bodily problem? And then my second question also is, is it, do you think, is it perhaps possible that uh, stuttering could be one of those disorders that actually arise from a psychological issue such as the um, repression of rage, of anger, um, could could that actually be be converted into something like a, a speech disorder? Yeah. yeah. So, so for your first question, Peter, um, yes, I I believe that things in the mind, whatever your thoughts are, can be converted into um, energy and and even. clear when we talk about emotions so um, so if you have an emotion um, it, emotions tend to reside in particular places of the body for example worry often happens in the stomach and so you'll see people with stomach ulcers um, we have tension <clears throat> we have tension in different parts of our body lots of times in the back of the shoulders um, so that all those energies are really um, they, they cover the whole body and mind and they're just they, they're all one so we don't really we can't separate the mind from the body and that's why when you look at something complex actually anything that's complex it's really great to look at it as the whole to look at all of the like what's happening as a as a whole so yes I, I believe now speech pathologists are not psychologists and I've really thought a lot about this and how 
it affects me. But when we talk about stuttering, we really can't leave the psychological part out of it. We have to look at it in, in a, actually in a, a, a lot of depth. Um, so for me, the way I address it is from the emotional context and looking at where those energies are and, and looking and actually resolving those energies, resolving the worry and the stress and the fear, um, because those are really holding people back from speaking fluently. So that's done in a, in a very um, an ener energetic method that I've been working with for several years. Mm. In answer to your second question, um, the psychological part is is really strong where if somebody has some trauma or some kind of accident that can trigger disfluent speech and i think we've seen that where people become disfluent after an accident or after you know something that's been really traumatic i i even think that if you look back at child children that start to stutter that there are actually maybe some trauma there inadvertently by parents you know just saying something that just sticks with the child maybe not in the words so much but certainly the how it feels and that might might actually lead to you know stuttering continuing so yes it's i think it it very much is a is a big part so your work is really great because you bring much more of the psychological aspect to it than i do but i i'm certainly i i agree with that and i think it's a really great way to approach this stuttering is complex you'll have to really address it for many different angles and then you get to the center where it's like yes i have it i know i can do it we'll just get rid of all these things that don't um, that interfere with it, and then we'll uh, we'll be able to have easier speech. Not a hundred percent, because a hundred percent fluent speech is really not uh, not a goal. It's just to be speaking easily and express what you want. Yeah. Amazing! It's not. It's oh. not <laughs> We're doing. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. And that's interesting about trauma because. As uh, Peter says, many people who stutter, we can't address ourselves or describe as people who are highly sensitive. Like for some people, something might go fine, not as a trauma, but for some people it becomes trauma. That's what I want to add because I feel that I had trauma, but maybe some other person didn't feel that way. I really don't know. Yeah, that's, but probably that's, Maybe just just a question to everyone, just yes or no. Do you think you had some trauma? I actually think I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Trauma, trauma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's that's uh, yeah, that's that's part of the release. I mean that that of that emotion and kind of letting it go as well to kind of acknowledge. Yes, I. I, I had it because sometimes we cannot, it's hard to admit, to address and kind of really, kind of, uh, kind of really kind of get it in, into the light, like keep mm -hmm. all the time in mm -hmm. the closet, not admitting that, yes, I, mm -hmm. I have. Yeah, I would love to add a little bit to that. Yeah. yeah. First of all, amazing, Linda. Thank you. And the thing we're doing here, we're broadcasting right now the solution to stuttering. I hope you all um, understand this. We are recording. We're recording. We're recording. <laughs> we're going to broadcast out the solution to stuttering. It's a complex thing, obviously, mm -hmm. but the things that we're talking, they all are connected in. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And then trauma. Trauma is a big word, yes? People mm -hmm. think, oh, trauma, this. It has to be a big thing, but it's not. Small things can happen always. Right, right. You know, it can be a small thing like, hey, don't do that. Don't be like that. Stop uh, this because otherwise, you know, I don't want you anymore in my neighborhood. And then you're just a small, uh, you know, it happens often. Um, no, I'm not going to talk about this, but it, um, yeah it can be very very small things yes trauma it's a very broad uh yeah. word mm -hmm. a lot of things that, that can happen to you and we all have some kind of trauma yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so uh 
to continue. Uh, Hela, I think it's your turn to share something and maybe ask if you don't mind. My turn? Yeah. <laughs> we are just going over the screen, if you don't mind. Uh, I would love to hear sure. So I'm uh, putting my uh, turn to what should. Yeah. Thank you. I'm honored, Hila. Well, <laughs> I think the biggest thing that I learned is that, or not necessarily I learned, but I think more like things that I heard uh, reinforced that the thing that I already knew. And to me, it just becomes more clear and clear that stuttering really is not that complicated or complex, actually. It's actually pretty simple. And I think there's just a few concepts that we've already talked about in this session as well. And there's really just a few things that you have to understand. And then the solution to stuttering will simply follow from that. And I think some of the big things that are Mm, some of the big things that explain stuttering are, for example, the trauma that we talked about. And I believe that 99% of the people on this planet have some kind of trauma. And what follows from that trauma is a mind-body disorder, right? And in our case, the mind-body disorder is stuttering. But I think different mind-body disorders are, for example, addictions or depression or phobias, right? That's to me, that's all the same thing. It all comes from trauma, but it all develops or it all has a different symptom. And in our case, the symptom is stuttering. But because of that, the root cause is all the same. It's the trauma, as Peter, uh, Peter calls it, it's the emotional or psychological repression because that's, I think, what's happening. That is really the root cause of all this. And then you can... Talk about thoughts and, and feelings and what you have to do physical and like the physical intention and all that. But to me, the, the root cause is actually very simple and that also makes the solution very simple. And I've also watched some interviews and uh, I think Linda also talked about this when emotions do come up and stuff like that. The only thing you really have to do is just put your awareness on it and it will simply dissolve with it. And I think that's very true. I think really stuttering and also the solution isn't that very simple but of course when you are you know when you're new to it kind when you're new to it and you're just there living your life without really knowing stuff about stuttering then of course it can seem very complex because sometimes you stutter sometimes you don't and then there's all this stuff going on but actually when you you know take a bit of a more overarching more like from a higher perspective you know when you look at the certain things it all really comes down to a couple of things, and that's really what I, well, what, rein, what, what reinforced in me that belief that stuttering is pretty simple, and that, yeah, that makes the solution to it also very clear. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. And maybe you ask anybody anything if you don't mind, just anything that, or mm -hmm. or maybe just question to every to a to everybody if. Uh, I don't have a question yet, no. Okay, 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 okay. So let's uh, move on. If you don't mind, maybe we can ask Rick. Rick, uh, can you okay. share maybe what you maybe learned or, and, and I would suggest to ask anybody anything if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, for me, I would consider myself a newbie because I don't know all the ins and outs of stuttering. Um, when I was listening to Chase, uh, he had mentioned when you're focusing more on your stutter, you stutter more. Right. And for me, that's where for many years, I would be fearful to speak to other people because I didn't want to show them that I stuttered. It went through school, 
and through my life. Um, there would be times when looking back that I had thought, okay, I'm more fluent now because when I do talk, I'm more fluent. But when I was looking back at it, it was because I was talking less to people or talking only when I needed to mm -hmm. um, ask a question or something. And that's when I was feeling, okay, I'm more fluent now, but it was because I wasn't talking as much. Mm -hmm. And two, um, I had went through school and that's when you were in the therapy um, uh, groups and stuff. But ever since high school, I haven't been in a speech therapy uh, setting. Um, and I had really not research on how to stop stuttering or cure it or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And two, until last year, I wasn't able to say I met a person who actually stuttered until last year because wow. I wasn't really coming in contact with people who stuttered. So I was like, okay, is it me or is there anyone else kind of thing? Um, but since, uh, since last year, I've been trying to, let's say, put myself out there more, uh, um, not, forcibly, but more than what I was before, as far as just uh, simple things, going through the drive through is has always been a train wreck at times, because you might say what you're wanting the first time fluently, but then you hear over the speaker, can you repeat that? I couldn't understand <laughs> it. Right. And then once you have to repeat it, your fluency is out the window. But I've been trying to do that more so or asking questions of certain people when I want to know something more, I will try to engage with them more than I was before. Oh. And now I'm in the process of trying to stretch and build my comfort zone further by trying to get um, into the public speaking events where I might speak for a few minutes to 20 minutes or so about stuttering awareness to help people who don't know much about it be more familiar with all the struggles that people who stutter have or might have. Wow, mm -hmm. that's beautiful. And this is actually also the occasion. Like, yeah, we're we're speaking and uh, we're we're yeah we're we're talking about stuttering. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, could you ask anybody anything, or like maybe a question to everybody, or maybe you don't have anything. Just just a question. Actually. 
I've been thinking about something mm -hmm. for a while, and it's kind of hard to ask people who don't stutter the question because you'll get a totally different answer. But I thought about um, ever since I was in elementary school, we had telephones and communication was always done through the telephone. But nowadays we have smartphones that you can call or text people. Has that made it easier or hinder the people who stutter to text somebody or ask somebody text me rather than call me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's a great question. Yeah, I feel like definitely having an easier way to communicate through text and things like that will make people who are scared to stutter hide a lot easier and on the other hand when you call someone nowadays it's it's a lot you since you have the option to text anyway and you call that will just push you more out of your comfort zone now so i i, I think if you're scared to stutter and scared to show that you stutter then if you ask someone to text you or anything like that you'll just hide yourself more but if you see that calling or leaving your, leaving your comfort zone is the way to overcome your stutter i also believe doing it nowadays can help you overcome your stutter a lot more too and honestly it's uh, like it's such a relief you don't have to call just texting and that's it but uh, yeah at the same time on the sa on one hand it's a relief but um, yeah, um, yeah. Um, yes and, uh, and on the other hand it became harder on you because it made it easier to hide right. but in your heart there's you who wants to express his him or herself. Yeah. So you know, at a point, it will become too hard on you, and you know, you will have to go out. But um, it's ah uh, that. Yeah. Actually, uh, yeah. Uh, Pedro, Pedro, what would you say um, about phones and text? How do you deal with that? <laughs> okay, texting is my best friend <laughs> because I don't really have to, you know, vocalize anything. Um, I can just text and um, order a pizza. I can text and, you know, purchase a movie ticket. I don't have to talk to anybody. But on the other hand, with all this new vo vo voice technology with Google Home, and with Siri and with your vehicles being voice activated, um, I struggle with that. But like what, like what Chase was talking about, just push yourself and just do it. Because as you keep on d doing it and are successful, that's a daily win. And with every daily win, I get a little better. And with the building of that momentum, I'm unstoppable. Right, yeah. right, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a question. Sure. Um, yes, I have a question. Because I heard a lot about pushing pushing out of your comfort zone, pushing to do things, pushing to get into a flow state, pushing to get momentum. Um, but what about the, to me, a fact is that when we are in the moment, when we are in the present moment, we don't think about past or future. We don't think about stuttering. We're 100% fluent. So my question is, 
why the push? Yeah, um, I'll chime in here. I find that a lot of the time, at least when I was trying to overcome my stutter, I definitely wasn't in the present moment and I definitely was so in my head, so introverted and I didn't want to, like, like you, I, I'm sure every, everyone can relate to the thoughts that go in your brain when you're about to stutter and you're not in the moment and that's all you think about. But for like the bow and arch bioenergetics, I find that is what grounded me. That is what allowed me to get out of my head. That's what allowed those negative thoughts to dissipate. That's what allowed me to be in my body. And then when I was in my body, I was in the present moment and I was able to communicate clearer that way and mm -hmm. just building those steps, not necessarily, I, not, I mean, I guess it's pushing something, but it's pushing to be more grounded. It, it's, it's not, it's not forcing anything. I guess it's just allowing yourself to be grounded and taking action when you're grounded versus taking action when you're in your head and doing that. That's, that's what I found. Right. Because when I was growing up, um, I heard my entire life, I will never be able to get a job. I will never be able to have a relationship. I will never be able to do the things that other people do that don't st 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 stutter. And, and when we're in our bubble, our comfort zone, we feel safe, but I wanted to be like other people. I wanted to just go out there and do what they have been doing their entire lives because I was told I cannot do that. Mm -hmm. They labeled me as having m mental retardation and they told me that I should just stay home, apply for disability and just live my life in my home all day long, 24 hours a day. And so I knew that there was so much more that I can do, but I was scared until when I turned 40 years old, I said, I'm done. I'm tired mentally, physically, emotionally. I'm tired. I am done. And when I embraced my stutter and said, I don't care anymore. I don't care if I stutter. I don't care if other people are mocking me. I just don't care. And when I did that, I was able to push myself and do things that I thought I could never do in my life. And when I did that, like speaking, sp speaking on stage in front of a hundred people, I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would be able to do that. But when I turned 40, I said, I'm done. I'm tired. I'm tired. I want to just, you know, live my life and just be happy. And when I did that, I could do things that I thought I could never do because I was pushing myself. Go do this. Go do this, which I knew I was going to stutter. I knew it. But when I did it, I felt a win. And so I kept on doing it every single day, every single day. And, and that's when I had the courage to have a YouTube channel, the courage to have a podcast. Now, I just don't care. I'm Pedro. I stutter. Life goes on. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. I, see, oh. <clears throat> can, I, can I add just one thing? I think there are two kinds of pushing. Uh, so one that maybe you mean a bit, Hiller, is like the physical pushing in, in our stuttering, like the, the physical stuff, we're trying to push something and there is tension and that's one thing. But another pushing is like Mel Robbins uh, says, when you have a challenge and it's something challenging and our body is wired so that, uh, as she says, we'll never feel like it. 
because it's not comfortable. And the only way, again, she says that, and probably that's true, the only way to actually go and do it is to take yourself and push a little bit because otherwise we are naturally so much inclined, you know, to something which is more comfortable. So, and we'll, we, we never feel like doing like challenging stuff. So mm -hmm. I think that's the pushing that Pedro uh, says, that's, that's how I hear it, I understand it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, can 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 I also say? Sure, sure, sure Peter. Um, I think there's there's one thing we have not yet uh, talked about, and and that's the actual physical stuttering. Uh, maybe we should just uh, make a few, make one. Or can I make one one point? And that is, um, I fully agree that it, it it all starts in in the mind. It's it's probably a, a psycho psychological repression uh, which causes energy and tension uh, tension energy and and that eventually goes to sit on on your vocal cords um, so the the vocal cords it seems they they lock down they they freeze they they go into a freeze mode um, and apparently that 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 uh, fro those frozen cords that causes all these these physical repetitions and prolongations and things. So if you keep your your vocal tract open, uh, your your lips a bit open and uh, speak on on airflow, that should uh, prevent much of this blocking and and freezing. So, uh, as far as I con as I'm concerned, it, it's a mental thing. We we can, um, can try to, or we should uh, change our minds. But also, um, we can also uh, work from 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 uh, from downwards, but downwards up, and that is just uh, speaking a bit slower sometimes. And because slow speech also reduces the tension on the vocal cords uh, and, and keeping, keeping open the, the vocal tract and speaking like, like this, keeping your lips open and slowing the first syllables. Uh, that actually helped me immensely for the first 30 years of my um, fluent life or relatively fluent life. I used that to, to to become much more fluent, uh, and now now that I've um, been working on, on on the mind body thing, that helps me even more. But we we shouldn't um, neglect the physical side of uh, um, stuttering because uh, yeah, it, it should be a mind thing, but also a body thing. Uh, that's just what I wanted to say here. A hundred percent agreed is that if we have you see if we have a if we have a flower a flower who, who wants to uh who wants to blossom who wants to go up towards the sun but first it has to go down into the earth and this is also true for if we want to express expressiveness happens obviously in the whole body but here this place if we want to be up here, we first have to go down. We have to, for example, breathe out and drop our shoulders. Yeah, shoulders is great. <laughs> Stuff like that. Um, open up the throat, we could do that also. So the body first, the physical things first. Uh, if we want to go up, if you want to blossom, if you want to go, into the skies towards the sun and pretend you're a god or goddess <laughs> you first have to root yourself deep down into the gates of hell um, I'm, I'm just kidding but <laughs> rooted into the ground that's the first thing and then you go up because mm -hmm. of it 
I yeah. think that's what we started with with the the uh, Pedro's question to Chase about the exercises, and I really uh, think that yeah, this this area about the physical things, what we can do, is huge, and again, each of us like take uh, in our life some some like therapies or courses or programs, trying different things, and uh, yeah, so. I really maybe don't want to go into that topic because it's again endless. Uh, but I think the conclusion is that both areas are are important. It's like like a circle. It's hard to say like where is the top, where is the bottom. It just turns and you know it goes. Yeah. So both. It's all one thing. It's all one, one thing. thing. You're a human being, right? Mm -hmm. You're a human. You have a body, you have a mind, you have energy in you, surrounding you. It's all one thing. Yeah. So if you want to be fluent, you have to approach it as one thing. Yeah. 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 And actually, that's a great conclusion, if you don't mind, because I think we're all different. But it's mm -hmm. so amazing that we got together and turned into one thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So mm, thank you so, so much for participating, for joining. That's so amazing to, to see you all, to like uh, have you all in person and connect uh, in like all, all together. Mm -hmm. Okay, may I um, jump in? I um, want to say um, um, I am extremely grateful for all of you because all of you have such amazing st st stories and they all help me because you know we are still learning every day and what I have learned from each of you is just truly amazing truly phenomenal so I want to say thank you so much thank you Pedro thank you I, I have the same thing thank you I all you I watched most of your guys in in interviews and it was just so awesome to watch. And I also just want to say with the Broker Brothers, I love your idea. I don't think we really talked about it here, but I love your idea of thinking that we're already fluent because as I remember this story, I was walking in my university and I was looking at all these people and I felt inferior, inferior to them, not just speech wise, but I always placed them up here and myself down here. Like, just because my speech was bad, now I was seeing their styles better. Now I'm seeing the, the way they walk looks better. Now I'm seeing like their hair looks better. And going from that state, <laughs> trying to talk up to them made my stutter a lot worse. And with your guys's, with you guys' not theory, but your guys' thing that assume like you are all, like, cause you are already fluent. You're already mm -hmm. fluent. That's the, the self kind of love kind of thing. Like, assume you're already awesome. Assume like you're already, you you yeah. guys are, are at least like this. Maybe you're up here, but like at least like this. You guys are both fluent, and I, I feel like that that's so powerful. All right, so, your uh, Chase, your hair is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and and you don't have to assume anything because it already is why assume then your mind is going to play tricks on you then you get the mind body disorder again it already yep. is mm -hmm. there's nothing to assume and so i want to also say thank you so much everybody and uh, for me too this is very inspirational and very uh just a great thing to be doing here and to be broadcasting or putting out in just a couple of days something that a lot of people who study will thoroughly enjoy if they have their ears open anyway and um so we're all on our own paths it's very individual we're all doing our thing mm -hmm. you know and the courage that i think um pedro talked about just uh, a couple of minutes back is that the thing we all have in common is that the courage to take action to step up to understand to have uh the feeling that i have to go i have to do something about this because the way i am right now this is not 
satisfy. I have expressiveness in me and I would really like to get it out, you know? And therefore, I think the most important thing, if you want to change anything in your life, it takes courage. Mm -hmm. It means that it comes from the heart, yes? You come from the heart. You start speaking from the heart. You start acting from the heart, from which is the, the real you, your true self. And so it's amazing that you all are doing this. And you're, we all here, but you guys are all being inspirational for the millions of people who started all over the globe okay. so things are going to change things are going to change definitely so when you mentioned um Chase's hair i felt inferior <laughs> than I, I put myself oh, back <laughs> you're you're so you're so amazing so yeah so, um so thank you so much. I think that's a great conclusion. I really don't want to take much of your time. Uh, thank you for, for sharing your beautiful ideas and hope we stay in touch. That's, that's so beautiful. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Was thank, awesome. you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Bye-bye.